Hiya too. So today in science, we're going to look a little bit more at habitats. And your job today is going to be to go on a bit of a habitat walk, okay? So I wonder if you can think first of all, what is a habitat? Have maybe a chat to your adult that's with you. I'll jot some notes. What is a habitat? Okay. So hopefully you said a habitat is where an animal or a human lives. And in that habitat, you're provided with everything you need. So you're provided with your shelter. You're provided with security. So it keeps you safe. Okay. In your habitat, you're easily able to get yourself some water and some food. Okay. And we all live in habitats that best suit us. So, for example, a polar bear will live in the North Pole and he's got lots of warm fur to keep him warm. He's got his actual fur looks white, but it isn't. But it looks white so he can camouflage in the snow. So animals and humans choose habitats that are best for them. OK, so what you're going to go and do today is using this worksheet in your pack. You're going to go around your local area, so it can be your local park, your garden, your street, and you're going to draw a map of it. Draw the trees and the plants and any other animals' homes that you find. And I want you to try and find maybe, it might be a worm, it might be a ladybird. Lots of different animals, it might be a bird, insects. I want you to draw and label any that you see, okay? Why are you doing that? Just following on from our lesson we did last week, you could see if you can see living and non-living items. Perhaps you could jot those on the back of your sheet or somewhere on your sheet as well. So that's still going back to learning we've done, looking for living and non-living things. Okay, let's just have a little quick look on here before we move on. So it says, where do you live? That's our habitat. Think about what living things live and grow there. How does your habitat keep you safe and sheltered? How does your habitat provide food and water? So where do we get that from? How does your habitat provide space for you to move and grow? Humans, like us, are unique because we can make big changes to our habitat to make sure we have everything we need. How do humans change their habitat? So we build roads and vehicles so we can travel everywhere quickly. We pipe fresh clean water to our homes to use for drinking, cooking and washing. We grow plants for food and farm animals for meat. We even have pets to keep us company. So we've really adapted and changed our habitat, haven't we? We build houses with heating to protect us from cold weather or with air conditioning to protect us from the heat. Plants and animals can't make big changes to their habitats like humans can. They rely on the environment around them to provide them with everything they need. This means they have to live somewhere that has the right conditions to help them stay alive and well. Because different places have different conditions, the plants and animals that live there are different too. We are going to look at some common British habitats. First of all, so we've got urban habitats. So most people in Britain live in an urban habitat. Urban habitats are areas with lots of buildings for people to live and work in. Some of the living things in urban habitats are here because people have put them here. This includes trees we plant, hedges and plants in parks and gardens, and our pets. There are also many living things that grow wild in urban habitats. These plants and animals have found their way to survive alongside the people that live nearby. Flowering plants such as nettles, daisies, dandelions and buttercups. They grow in parks, gardens and hedges. They even grow in abandoned buildings. Many insects, slugs and snails live among the plants. We call those micro habitats. We're going to look at those next lesson. Some animals, such as squirrels and garden birds, get their food from trees and hedges that grow in cities. Other animals, like foxes, pigeons and rats, are able to live in cities because they get most of their food from the waste people leave behind. Oh, I don't know what I'd feel like if I saw this one here. And that's adapted to its environment because humans are leaving food. In a woodland habitat, there are lots of trees that grow close together. Common trees that grow here include English oak, ash, beech, Hawthorn and birch. Most British woodlands are. Pardon me. <coughs> a deciduous, which means the leaves fall off the trees in winter. The fallen leaves provide food and shelter for many creatures and rot into the soil. As well as the fallen leaves, there are shrubs, flowers, and grasses beneath the trees. These provide a home for many inse insects and invertebrates like worms, slugs and snails. An invertebrate is, someone, is something an 
insects have an animal that doesn't have a backbone. So you'll find lots of insects in woodlands. You'll also find animals like badgers, bats, mice and squirrels. The fruit and seeds of the trees and the small creatures that live among these leaves provide food for many birds and small mammals, such as bats, mice, squirrels, stoats and weasels. Bigger mammals such as foxes and badgers and deer come to the woodland. There's pond habitat. It's a body of fresh water and some ponds are man-made and appear in parks and gardens. Others are natural dips and hollows in the land that are filled up with water. Lots of plants and animals live in the water in ponds and many more live nearby. These plants provide food for shelter for worms, slugs, snails. So you can find worms, slugs sometimes under logs, sometimes near ponds, lots of different habitats. Many birds live near the water, including ducks and kingfishers. Okay. You can see on those pictures there some of the pond life that habit their habitat is the water or close to the water. We've got coastal habitats, that means they're near the sea, near the coast. Britain is made up of islands and has lots of coastal habitats. The plants here have adapted to grow in salty, windy conditions. These include samphire, juniper, sea kale, glasswort and marum grass. Many of the creatures that live in the coastal areas survive in rock pools left by the tides. We've got coastal birds. I know you've all been probably been to the seaside and heard the seagulls coming. We've got dolphins, porpoises, even whales can be seen in some of the waters in Britain. Most living things live in habitats in which they are suited. For example, a polar bear has thick fur that keeps it warm in its cold habitat. So that's the important thing to understand that everything adapts to live in the environment they've got. So polar bears live in the Arctic. So they've got body, fur and skin to reflect that. Okay, they've got lots of features that help them survive in that condition. Okay, so just before you go on your nature walk, I want you to just have a little listen to some of this story and it just gives you some ideas of different environments. A House is a House for Me by Mary Ann Hoberman. A hill is a house for an ant. An ant. A hive is a house for a bee. A hole is a house for a mole or a mouse. And a house is a house for me. A web is a house for a spider. A bird builds its nest in a tree. There is nothing so snug as a bug in a rug, and a house is a house for me. A coop, that's a house for a chicken. A sty, that's a house for a sow. A fold, that's where sheep all gather to sleep. A barn, that's a house for a cow. It is also, of course, a house for a horse. A kennel's a house for a dog, a dog. A dog is a house for a flea. But when a dog strays, a flea sometimes stays, and then it may move in on me. Houses for rabbits are hutches. A house for a mule is a shed. A castle's a house for a duchess. A bed bug beds down in a bed. Mosquitoes like mud holes or puddles. Whales need an ocean or sea. A fish or a snake may make do with the lake, but a house is a house for me. A shell is a dwelling for shellfish, for oysters and lobsters and clams. Each snail has a shell and each turtle as well, but not any lions or lambs. Lions live out in the open. Monkeys live up in a tree. Hippos go down in a river. Now what do you know about me? An igloo's a house for an Eskimo. A teepee's a house for a Cree. A pueblo's a house for a hoppy, and a wigwam may hold a mohi. A garage is a house for a car or a truck. A hangar may hold a mohi. Okay, I'm just going to stop that there so you can see there's lots and lots of different environments and habitats depending on the insect, animal, or person. Okay, so enjoy your nature walk, having a look at living and non living things. And fill in your local habitat map with any insects, animals, plants that you find there, okay? Enjoy.